Welcome to today's lesson. In this video, we're going to look at how to approach questions on genetics. And this is Biology 5090 following the Examination Council of Zambia syllabus. So please stay tuned as we show you on how to approach questions on genetics. Now, questions on genetics, they come always in paper two, section A, and it's usually the last question, which is question five in section A. So I've made a, uh, I've compiled from a number of examination questions, past examination questions, and I just want to show people on how we can approach these questions. Okay, so the first question reads, pure breeding dwarf garden pea plant were crossed with pure breeding tall garden pea plants. The resulting offsprings were all tall. What is meant by pure breeding? Two, using your own symbols, state the genotypes of the parents. B, using a genetic diagram, show the cross between a dwarf parent and one of the offsprings. So now it is very important that we analyze the questions as we go through. So here are some keywords. So we've got this one, pure breeding. Then we've got the dwarf here. Then we also have another word here. As you can see, this is to pure breeding. Then we've got the talk. So these words are some of the keywords that you can use to answer the question, including this word here, offsprings. Okay. So we'll start by explaining what the word pure breeding means. Now, pure breeding, uh, the other name for this pure breeding is what is called homozygous. So the other name for pure breeding is homozygous. Okay, now what does this mean? So pure breeding uh, simply refers to an organism or an individual having the same type of alleles or genes at the same locus. The same uh, uh, types of alleles or genes at the same locus. That's what pure breeding means. As you can see, the other word for uh, pure breeding is homozygous. So homo means one or simply same. So homozygous. Okay. So now, since we have been told to say uh, this dwarf garden pea was homozygous and the dwarf, when we are writing the alleles, we, uh, there are two types of alleles. There is what we call a dominant allele and what we call a recessive allele. Now, the symbol for a dominant allele in genetics is always a capital letter. Then the symbol for a recessive allele is a, a small letter. So here, since they say dwarf, which means short, so we are going to use the small letters. So the small letters we are going to use is T and T, okay? That is for the dwarf. And then for the toe here, we are also going to use, because it is homozygous or rather pure breeding, we are going to use capital letter T and T, okay? So we, we've already answered question A, because we have said pure breeding refers to an individual or organism having the same type of alleles at the same locus, okay? So we go to two, which is saying, using your own symbols, state the genotypes of the parents. So the first one we are, to, we are supposed to state is the pure breeding dwarf garden P, as already figured out, this one will be small letter T and small letter T. Then we go to the tall one, this one will be capital letter T and capital letter T. Okay, since the question is saying that these two were crossed, this one and this one, we can quickly use a Punnett square just to see how the crossing was done. So we are going to cross the tall one and the short one. So usually for just determining the outcome or having an idea of what and what you are crossing, we use a Punnett square. So a Punnett square uh, works pretty much like a multiplication timetable. Okay, so it's simple like that. So we are going to say this T multiplied by this T here, we are going to have T and T. Then here, we're going to have this T and the small T. So here we have the capital letter T and the small T. Then here, we're still going to have the same thing. Okay, so what is going, going on here is 
this t multiply by the t, you have that. This t multiply by this one, you have that. This one multiply by that one, you have that one. So you can see that all the resulting offsprings, they were heterozygous to. So this is capital letter T and the small letter T. Okay, so using a genetic diagram, show the cross between a dwarf parent and one of the offspring. So as you can see, we have said a dwarf parent. Now a dwarf parent, you know it's T and T. Then one of the offsprings here, we figured out that the offspring, they have a T and a T. So these are the two that we are crossing. And O is 5. Let's see how we can perform the crossing. So just a reminder, the correct answer for question A was supposed to be written like this. So a pure breeding refers to an individual having two copies, okay, two copies of the same allele at a locus. For example, this is what has been given. So that is the answer you're supposed to fill in there. Now, let's do, let, let's do a genetic crossing here. So like I said, genetic diagram, this is what I'm about to demonstrate. So here, what are we crossing? So on top here, you can just write what we are crossing is a dwarf parent. Okay, so this is a dwarf parent. That's what we are crossing, dwarf parent. So we are crossing a dwarf parent and one of the offspring here. Okay, and the offspring, that is what we are crossing. So I'll just first write this one offspring here that is what we are crossing okay so now here all these that are written here you have to write them in exactly the same order that are written you have to write the parental phenotype so phenotype is just uh phenotype is just the uh the physical appearance okay the physical appearance so physical appearance here phenotype we know that this one is the dwarf okay so you just write dwarf that is the appearance okay then for the offspring here the phenotype what we can see is that it is what it is tall okay it is tall now here on the parental genotype so we are just going to write t and t then here we are going to write this t and that t it's a trozygous tall this is what we figured out then here on the column for gametes, it means that you have to write them now one by one. You've seen, I've separated here, they are together, I've written them one by one. These are together, so I'll also write them one by one. So I'll write them one by one like that. Then I now begin to cross. So I'll cross this one here. This one here is going to cross with this one. So you start with a capital letter, so it will be T and uh, T, like that, okay? Then this same one also, it should be able to cross with that one. Then here, we are having, uh, so we are having a T, small letter T and small letter T, because it is this one and that one. Then we go to this one. So here, we are having this one and that one crossing together. We start with capital letter T and the T there. Then we also, uh, go this same one here it also has to cross with that one so that we have t and small letter t so here make sure that the f1 generation is slightly on top here so that this genotype is directly corresponding with this one then here under phenotype you, you can just go ahead and be writing this uh, t and t there it means the tall then this one here it will mean dwarf Okay, this one will mean dwarf, then this one will mean tall, okay, then this one will mean dwarf, okay, so this one will mean dwarf. So you can even write the genotype ratio if you want, so let me just write the genotype ratio here, GR, which will be equivalent to uh, 2, capital letter T, and small t, then 2, uh, 2 T T that's what we have here then this one will mean if phenotype ratio it will mean 2 to to 2 dwarf that's what it's going to mean okay so that is how you answer such a particular question okay we proceed 
we go to another question that came in another year. The question reads, uh, two farmers, one with a pure breeding, again, we are still dealing with a pure breeding. So two farmers, one with a pure breeding black bull. So here, pure breeding black bull, and the other with a pure breeding white cow decided to cross their cattle. The black bull was crossed with the white cow and all the resulting offspring had a coat color called Ron. So this is a completely new color. None of the offsprings were either black or white. Why? Because uh, both they were, uh, they were both dominant. So both genes were dominant. So this is a situation which we call co-dominance, where the, child, the offspring that is born uh, looks neither like the father nor the mother, but it is a hybrid that is produced. So a hybrid is a result of what we call co-dominance, meaning the gene from the father and the gene from the mother, they are both, uh, they are both strong, they are both uh, dominant. So because they are both dominant, they are going to share on how their characteristics are expressed. So that is what we call what? Co-dominance. Okay. So here, the fact that they've told us pure breeding black bull, we can come up with it, B and capital letter B. Okay. That is just from our head. Then for white here, uh, a white cow here, we know it will also be capital letter W and capital letter W. Okay. So now let's try to answer the questions before we get ahead of ourselves. The question reads, using letter B for the allele for black coat color, okay? So using letter B for the allele for coat color, meaning what we did here on top here, it is actually correct, okay? And W for the allele for white coat color. State the genotype of the offspring. So now this is what I say. If the offspring, because here it will mean that they had crossed B, okay, B, I'll use a Punnett square, like I always say, a Punnett square is used when you are crossing, uh, when you're just trying to identify something for fast, fast. But there's a part where they use, they require you to use a, gene a, a genetic quality diagram. The, despite the results being the same, but in the exam for giving answers, you use a genetic diagram. A Punnett square is just used when you're trying to find the answer, like in the multiple choice questions, or you want to determine which one is there. Uh, which one is the correct combination? Okay, so here we can have the W as B and W, then also B and W, so that we have B, uh, W. Okay, we also go down there B and W, then we are going to have B and W. Even here also it will be B, uh, W. So this simply means that all the children, they are going to be BW, BW, that is the genetics, that's the, the, the genotype. Okay, so show the genotype of the offspring. So the answer they wanted here was BW. Okay, two, explain why neither the bull nor the cow had their coat color expressed in the phenotype of the offspring. So the answer here is because both the genes of the black bull and the genes of the white uh, cow were both dominant, okay? So the reason is very simple. Both the genes of the black bull and the genes of the white, uh, the white cow were both dominant, resulting into what is known as co-dominance. So that is the answer that you're supposed to put here. Okay, we continue. Now they are saying, using a genetic diagram, predict the chances of the second filia, uh, F2, uh, second filia, which is F2 offspring having a Ron coat color, when the parent black bull was crossed with one of the Ron offspring. So what are they saying here? So here, you start, you follow the same order, there is parent phenotype, there is parent genotype, gametes, then this time around, instead of having F1, we're going to have an F2 generation. Because an F2 generation, for example, if me, uh, if me, I had children, those children would be called my F1 generation. Then if my children have other children, then those children are going to be called the F2 generation of me. Okay. So since here, they are telling us that the parent, Black Bull, was crossed with one of the Ron offspring. So here, you are just going to write, okay, uh, here on the phenotype. So you can write here as usual. 
you write the black bull so you can just say black or, or you can just say bull okay you can just say the bull then here on the cow here you just write cow since a cow is a female a bull is a male so you write bull then on parental phenotype phenotype is what we can see the observable features of an organism like color in this case so here we are writing black okay so this one here what we are expected to write is black okay then on the cow here we are expected to write roan because all the offsprings that we have produced at that time were roan okay so now this time we go to parent genotype we know that the bull was b b okay it was pure breeding okay then the roan one here we know that it's b w so that is the genotype then gametes you just have to write them one by one so this b and that b then that b there and the w so you write them one by one then you go to crossing now so it means that this one here is crossing with that one so we have our b and b so meaning this b and that b then this same b here it also has to cross with this one here so that we have our b w okay we go to the second one this one has to cross with this one so that we can have b and b then this same one here has to cross with this one so that we can have our b and w okay so having written this this one should be correlating like that then on phenotype we are going to write this one is black okay so you write the full black here okay when you go to this one this one is wrong okay so this one is wrong then from there this one is black okay so black then this one is also wrong so you write this is your wrong okay so that is the wrong there now let's just read the question they are saying using a genetic diagram predict the chances of the second filia offspring having a wrong coat color so what are the chances here so now e, 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 uh, chances uh, you use the phenotype because they are talking about ron ron is the color so that is phenotype so you just check now how many uh remember when you are dealing with chances you have to look at the total that you have more like probability so probability is equal to the favorable or desirable outcome divided by the total outcomes so in this situation here what you're going to do is very simple you are just going to count the total which is one two three four okay and how many rounds do we have we just have two so we have one and two so this one will be two out of four so the chances to find the chances here it will be two out of four then we can express it in terms of percentage you just multiply it by 100 so this one here one uh that one there 25 okay so here we have 50 percent chance okay so the answer they were looking for here is 50 percent chance so chance is best expressed in terms of what percentage don't leave it as a fraction but if they ask for probability you can leave it in fraction form if they ask for a chance make sure you leave it in the, uh, this form which is the, uh, 50 percent chance and then you have to really show what you are doing okay so having done that remember like we did in the previous you can do the uh, the genotype ratio which will be like 2b uh, uh, b okay to 2 uh, b w so that is the genotype ratio then the phenotype ratio you write the full words not initials but the phenotype ratio here it will also be 2 black okay two black uh two two run then after you do this that's when you go ahead now to calculate the what the chances so it will just be two out of the total here which is four then multiply by 100 and you find your answer so we continue with the next question the question reads mrs mumba delivered a baby girl in a certain hospital 
Mrs. Mumba has blood group O and the father to the girl has blood group AB. Mrs. Mumba sues the hospital for giving her a wrong baby whose blood group was O. Explain using a genetic diagram why Mrs. Mumba would win or lose the case. So to start with here, they are saying Mrs. Mumba has blood group O. So this blood group O means that it, the genotype can only be I, uh, O, I, O. O is always recessive. So this is the only genotype that it can have. And they are saying the father to the girl has blood group AB. And blood group AB, this one is only I, A, I, B. This is the only thing that uh, the only genotype that can exist. So the I here is always there. So whenever you are dealing with the blood group, because of the immunoglobin, that's why we put the I. So make sure that you put the I whenever you are dealing with the what? Eh? The blood groups, because this is uh, part of the, the blood group uh, system. Okay. So here now we are saying the baby here, okay, the baby was blood group O. Oh. So in order for us to know whether the baby was really blood group O or, or not, we have to check uh, the genotype. So now, since they want us to use a genetic diagram, so we go straight to doing a genetic what, eh? diagram. So here, we are going to write now, uh, uh, here, we we'll write for Mrs. Mumba. So Mrs. Mumba here, let's have Mrs. Mumba. Okay. And Mrs. Mumba, we are saying uh, her blood group, the phenotype, was just blood group what? O. So you write group O. Group o. So we write here, this one is group O, that is the phenotype. Then we go to Mr. Mumba himself now. So we have Mr. Mumba, who is the father of, who is supposedly the father of the child. So this is Mrs. Mumba. And we are going to put uh this is group a e. so this is group a e. okay so we we write now the genotype so the genotype here this is now where we put i o and i o so these things have to be in your head then we write also here we write i uh, a and i b so i a i b then we go to the gametes. Gametes, it simply means you have to write these things one by one. So the first I-O there, you go to the next I-O. Then from there, you write the I-A, the I-A there. Then from there, you go to the I-B. So we write the I-B like that. Then we start crossing. So we cross this one, which should be crossed to this one. So A is always dominant and O is recessive. So we'll start by writing I, uh, A, and D, I, then O. That is what we have. Then this same one here should be crossed with this one. So that here we are having now I, B, so I, B, then I, O. Okay. Then we go to the second one, this one should be able to cross with this one. Then we are going to have I, A, and I, O. So I, A, and I, O. Then from there, this same one here should be crossed with this, this one, so that we have uh, I, B, I, B, then I, O. So having crossed that one, we can now, uh, having crossed that one, we can now, so this, this this one should be alongside here. Then the phenotype here, we can see that this one is blood group A, this one is blood group B, this one is blood group A, this one is blood group T, B. So from this one, you can tell to say it was not possible for this couple here to have a baby with blood group T or this is not possible. Okay, so... Using this one now, you can even write a comment. Using uh, crossing the blood type of Mrs. Mumba and Mr. Mumba, it's not possible for them to have a blood group which is O. Therefore, Mrs. Mumba would win this one. Would win this case because she was very sure 
it's not possible to have a blood group O because of a father. Okay, so the only way it could have been possible, the correct genotype of the actual father, maybe if Mrs. Mumba was the, uh, this blood group, then Mr. Mumba was the, uh, maybe I, A, I, O. This one is possible because when we cross this one, even when we just try using a Kapanet square, let's try, let's try first first. So we have I O here, and we have I uh, O. Then here we maintain. So this is Mrs. Mumba. Then we we try this one I A I O. So you try it. You don't just guess. So we are using a Kapanet square. Like I always say, we use a Kapanet square. We want to just figure out something fast, fast. But when they say genetic diagram, we go using the genetic diagram that we have been using. So here, as you can see, we are going to have something like I, A, okay, I, O. Then here, we are also going to have I, A, then I, O. Okay, we go to the bottom one here, we are going to have I, O, I, Oh, because remember, it's more like multiplication table. This one times that one, that one. Then that one times that one, they are also going to have I, O, I, O. So from here, you can see there is a 50% chance that uh, this could be the father. This could be the correct genotype of the father. So on your answers here, you can write one of the answers is I, A, I, O, the other answer, you just write one of them. So the other answer can be I, B, okay, I, B, then I, O, or you can also have I, O, I, O. So any of these is the correct answer because when you cross them with, his, with Mrs. Mumba, at least the child, there will be a probability that one of the children is actually black group O. Okay. Let's deal with the last question in this session, and I'm sure uh, we'll be okay to, write, to answer any questions under this topic. Okay, so uh, blood, group, uh, blood group inheritance in humans is controlled by three alleles, IA, IB, and IO. Using appropriate genetic symbols, draw a genetic diagram to explain the possible blood groups of children whose parents are born heterozygous, so are both heterozygous for their blood groups, the father being A and the mother being blood group what, B. So since they are heterozygous, hetero simply means two different. So when you look at uh, blood group A, blood group A has got two possibilities. There is where we have IA, okay? There is IA, IA, and there is where O, where we have now I, a, I, O. So these are the two possibles for this one. Then also for blood group B also, the two possibles are I, B. Okay, so I, B, I, B, O, where we have I, B, I, O. So these are the two possibles. Now, here, because the letter is the same, it's B, B. So this one is called homo. Zygous, but this one is B and O, meaning it's heteroati zygous. Then even here, this one is I A I A. This one is homo zygous, but this one has got I A and I O, meaning this one is hetero zygous. Okay, so that's the beauty about this thing. Now we want to show the crossing, meaning we are showing. They are saying whose parents are both heterozygous, so meaning we are crossing. I B I O and D I A I O. That is what we are crossing. So here, uh, so here they have said the father. So the father is the one with A, then the mother is the one with B. So let's uh, try it. So here they are telling us here if we write father, so we have father here, then uh, the father, according to the question, they are saying uh, the father is A. So the father here, under the father, the phenotype, we are writing that it's blood group A. Then here, on the mother, okay, let's deal with the mother also. So under the mother, we know that this one, she was blood group B. 
Then the genotype, this is now where we write our I, A, I, O. So we show that these are heterozygous. Then even here, we also write I, B, I, O. So this is also heterozygous. Then the gametes, we write now I, A, we write them separately. Then I, O, I, B, and then I, O. So we just write them separately. So this one is this one, this one is that one, this one is that one, that one is that one. Then we start our, our crossing, okay? So our crossing, this one, we we'll cross with this one. Then we have I, A, I, B. So I, A, I, B. Then this same one here, we'll cross with this one so that we have I, A, I, O. So I, A, I, O. We go to the second one. This one, we'll cross with this one. So here we have I, B, I, B. Then I, O. Then this same one will cross with this one so that we have I, O, I, O, I, O. So this is what we have, I, O, I, O. So here under phenotype, we are just writing this is A, B, blood group A, B. This is blood group A. Then this is blood group A. E, then this is blood group O. Oh, so this is what we have. Okay. Now here our question was just telling us um, using appropriate genetic symbols, draw a genetic diagram to explain the possible blood groups of the children whose parents are both heterozygous for their blood groups. Okay. The father being blood group A and the mother being blood group B. So we have just done. This is how it is supposed to be done. Okay, now question B reads, using a named example, explain continuous variation. So this question is different from when they just say, uh, define continuous variation. But here they are saying, using a named example, explain continuous variation. So in here, you are going to say, for example, height in human beings is a type of continuous variation. So in continuous variation, there is a complete range of measurements from one extreme to the other. So you see, this one is an explanation. If they just say define continuous variation, would have this said, would they would have said continuous variation is a type of variation in which there is a complete range of measurements from one extreme to the other. So the way you phrase your answer matters. So make sure that you phrase it correctly. So uh, blood groups in humans is a type of discontinuous variation. So in this type of variation, an individual falls into a number of distinct classes or categories. You are either or, you are either or or not. So that's the way it is. When you talk about blood groups here, it's either you are blood group A or you are blood group uh, B or AB. You cannot be in between. So that is discontinuous variation. But in continuous variation, you can be able to make something that is continuous. For example, height, you can put a short one, the one who follows, the next one, until you put them in a certain order. That is continuous variation. Okay, so thank you for listening. Hope this will help. Uh, hope this one will help you in your uh, exams because we've literally covered different types of uh, genetic questions that can be brought in your exams. So please. Subscribe to this channel and uh, be helped in terms of revising for your exam. Thank you so much. See you next time.